TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Hello, hello. Rockets fired into Israel from Gaza, soldiers not showing up for the IDF service, and our northern border getting closer and closer to war. These will be the topics we'll, t we'll discuss this week and more. But first, let's say thank you. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. Every week being able to feed the people here in the state of Israel, it is just an amazing blessing that you allow us to be a part of. It, uh, we all, like we say every week, it's all because of you guys. Everything is because of you. The uh, support you guys put, bring in allow us to feed the people here. And by the way, this week we grew by another family. So we're slowly continuing to grow with your support. So thank you so much. And it, uh, God always promised if you bless, if you bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. So, so you can trust in God's promise. For your blessing of the nation of Israel here, the support you're giving to feed the people, God will bless you. Amen. Amen to that. And thank you guys so much. And this new family we brought on is a single mother with kids, and she's pregnant. And um, and uh, she can't walk because she's in have to yeah. rest. She's she's yeah. high high uh, high risk pregnancy. Risk pregnancy. And uh, and she's just a sad story. And the uh, father, you know, well, she's by herself. And uh, it's, a, it's just yeah. an amazing thing to be able to help these people because of you guys. It's just yeah. such a wonderful thing. And like I always say, if you haven't been a part of this yet and you feel like you want to, all you have to do is go to the goldenreport.com, go to the Support Us page, and find any way that goes best for you to send your support. Or be beneath all of our videos, there are links to the Golden Report uh, Support Us page and the Patreon page. So, thanks. Thank you so much. You. Well, you can see we're in a new studio. We've been good job. Yeah, we've been working on this one for a while. It's more realistic than the yeah, last yeah. studio. <laughs> yeah, more. It is basically our home. This is this is our live. This is our living room fireplace right there. Yeah. So welcome to our home. <laughs> and uh, we we uh, we're slowly slowly putting uh, stuff in the cabinets here. By the way, this uh, this uh, compass that you see here was the compass that was on the gospel ship when I was just a baby. And it was the boat my father had. And that was the compass on the boat. And I've kept it ever since then. I've, everywhere I go, I take it with me. It's been with me forever. So that's, that's what that is. And you can see you got the Ten Commandments and, uh, and, the, uh, and the Ark of the Covenant. And we're going to put more things up there uh, for you to be able to peep and look at and see what we got <laughs> going on over there. Uh, but first of all, I want to say that uh, by the time you will watch this, I will have already been in the Army and back. We are able to take care of all of our responsibilities and pass out the food this week, but we are making this update on Thursday. So if anything happens uh, newsworthy um, on Friday or, or before, but when you, yeah. we used to, the usual days we usually have all this stuff out, then uh, we'll just add it into next week's broadcast. I have to go to the army. It's um, so I'll be there and back by the time by the time you watch this, I have gone there and back. But we yeah. we were able to do everything we needs to be done. Yeah, God willing. Okay, yeah, let's, well, let's get started. On Saturday night, as soon as the Shabbat was over, Gaza fired a single rocket into Israel towards an open area where there are no homes, just open field. This is after last week they fired dozens of rockets into the sea as a training exercise. With Ramadan around the corner, looks like the coming month uh, could bring many attacks from Gaza and the Israeli Arabs. I'm not claiming it, just uh, putting two and two together. Yeah, we, you and I both, we, uh, we, we, we get upset about how on the Israeli news, they talk about the fear of the Arabs going to act up again and everything because it's, it, that's exactly what they're after. That's what that's giving them what they want, showing fear that they might attack us, right? But you do have to put two and two together. And uh, Ramadan, which is their, one of their holiest holidays, is apparently, you know, as, as it seems everywhere where there's Islam, that, that religion has a lot to do with violence and killing and everything else. 
Uh, so, uh, so on their holiest holidays, it's no, no different. That that's the time they usually act up the most and attack and kill more Jews. The most Jews is during their holy holidays, right? That 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 one in particular. They already do propaganda. It's a one month long holiday. Oh right? yeah, yeah. And they already do this propaganda showing our uh, settlements like they have mil uh, military. You, you see the picture of this uh, guy with the kippah yeah. and the and the gun, and yeah. it's like they we're gonna um, find them on Ramadan and kill uh, um, yeah. Arabs, and we're going, you know, they, they yeah. it's all yeah, over it's just, their, just, their media. Yeah, they're just trying to hype everyone up to to go out and kill as many Jews as possible during their holy holiday. Yeah. Well, on Sunday, one of the head military terrorists from the Islamic uh, Jihad was assassinated in Syria. It took place north of Damascus. He was the head of the part of the Islamic Jihad that is in charge of the attacks in Jerusalem. He was shot down in the morning in the street where he was sleeping the night before. The IDF said that they took the proper steps to be ready for whatever the Islamic Jihad had planned. This was most likely Israeli's answer for the rocket fired from Gaza on Saturday night. Here in Israel, the, uh, a lot of people have been attacking the right-wing coalition, saying, hey, we got the right-wing coalition, and they fired a rocket. And we no didn't. response. And, and it looked like there was no response, right? And, and the reason is, is because what Israel's used to is the response is the IDF goes in, they fly a plane over in, uh, or a drone or whatever, and they blow up an, uh, a warehouse full of uh, no, no, no people, but full, no, no uh, Islamic Jihad or Hamas soldiers, but, uh, but maybe some weapon storages or something like that. So they're used to seeing that. And Israel didn't do that. There was nothing, nothing they did nothing in Gaza after Gaza fired the rocket. Uh, but all of a sudden, you hear on the news, that this guy, the head guy of the Islamic Jihad, which was the Islamic Jihad who fired the rocket. Yeah. So sometimes you have to open your eyes and look broader, you know, to be able to realize what's actually going on. Yeah, and also every day, almost every day, we're still going into uh, their areas and arresting absolutely uh, uh, terrorist uh, members. Yeah. Every almost every day. Yep. The uh, well, I tell you what, I do like this studio though. I feel a little bit more relaxed. I don't feel so. Official. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's our home. <laughs> yeah. On Sunday, another terrorist attack in Hawawa. Only three weeks since the attack leading to the Israeli citizens going in and burning down homes, businesses, and cars in Hawawa. If you remember that, uh, where the Israelis, after the terrorist attack, killed the brothers, they went in and uh, the civilian Israelis, they went in and uh, did a lot of damage. This time, the terrorists opened fire on a car with an American Israeli Jew driving. He fired 20 rounds, hitting the Jewish man in the head with one round. David Stern, which was the guy, the man driving, with his wife in the car, was able to pull out his gun and fire back, injuring the terrorist. The Arab ran, and the IDF forces were able to find him injured and hiding in a nearby building. Now, this guy, David, he was he's a ex-American Marine, Marine yeah. ex-Marine, that works with Israel, uh, some of the Israeli forces here in Israel, and uh, and teaching them how to shoot and everything. So he was he's pretty he was the right guy to have in that situation. Wrong guy for that terrorist, right? And they saw they showed a video of him when he after he shot the terrorist, he was shot in the head, and he, they made a big deal on the, on the news and said, "Look at him, he, he even he was walking. Yeah, he was walking. Yeah, he took him. He took himself to the ambulance. Just yes. we're holding the. Yes. Yeah, he he shot the Arab, and then he, he <laughs> made himself a tourniquet where he was bleeding in his arm yes. and bandaged his head, but he took care of the whole thing before the uh, before the uh, Israeli uh, forces oh, even like showed Rumble. up. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was nice to see. Yeah. In the Israeli Air Force this week, over 200 soldiers did not show up for training in the scheduled training exercise. 180 of the ones that did not show up were pilots. They stated that they cannot take part in a military under dictatorship. We know this is ridiculous, but it is still a serious problem. Netanyahu said that he expects the commanding officers to take a strong stance and not allow this to go unpunished. It is spiritual how the left wing was able to uh, put such a spin on something that strengthens democracy in, into a lie that has the people believing 
that it's destroying democracy when the only thing it is is strengthening democracy. You know, it's uh, it's it's good. You know, things are getting out of hand. Yeah, I, I'll tell you in a little bit. We'll talk about things, uh, uh, something else that happened this week, and I'll get into my opinion. But uh, we'll, we'll just talk. Yeah. <laughs> now there is a group of IDF reservists that say they are tens of thousands uh, of reservists that will stop coming to IDF duty if the reform continues as it is. All I have to say is if they don't show up for duty, then put them in jail. And tens, thousands of, it's a big number, but Israel has close to a million IDF reservists. Re yeah, so reser reservists. IDF reservists. reservists is what she's saying. Yes. Res reservists. Reserves. Reserve. 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 <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> Army reserves, yeah. Uh, it's true. We have almost close to around a million. And if tens of thousands don't want to show up, it, it's bad. And uh, it, it puts some pain on uh, the military, but nothing that we can't overcome. And 99% uh, and of them, if not 100% of them, you know, it's not a new thing in all countries in the world. People are always, there are lots of people who don't feel obligated to do their military duty. And I think these people are just those kinds of people who found a new excuse why not to show up. So put them in jail, make a point out of them, and, and, and then, you know, keep going. We're training new pilots and new soldiers every day, you know. Every day the entire population of 18-year-olds go into the Army every, every, every year, right? Finish high school, Every 18-year-old goes into the army. That's a pretty big number. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, so I don't have any. I don't. I'm not worried that the IDF is going to be in any danger anytime yeah. soon because of this. But uh, just well, needs to be taken care of. I just disappointed. I put a post on uh, Facebook, I think, this week because um, without going into details, what are what are you doing? But you're also risking your life every time you go into the IDF and many like you, and you even didn't think last time, the last government was so bad, yeah. and we didn't agree with so many things they did. They, they, they Basically, they, sa they sold our Negev um, to, to the Arabs, and they did so many things that we didn't agree. But you still went to your duty, yes. you protect the country, you protect my, your family, everybody's family, and the left-wing family too. Yeah, <laughs> you know. It's the like state of Israel. because you didn't think to say it's something like that. Of course not. And I'm really disappointed. I know some of them are really good people and they really risk their life for this country. And I think they just brainwashed or something. It's really spiritual, like you said before. Yeah. How can they not see the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, some of the right wing coalition uh, mem uh, Knesset members went to some of these uh, protesting where they have they're all riled up yeah. and, and they weren't they they have. Hard time trying to talk to them, right? Because they're all riled up. They're just yelling at them. But one thing in common that everyone has when they go talk to the protesters and ask them, okay, so you have a problem with the reform. What's your specific problem? None of them can say it. Yeah. They don't know what the problem is they because just they just believe the spin of everyone else and they just say ridiculous, outrageous statements. Yeah, like Bibi. Bibi did yeah, this. Bibi, Bibi did we don't that. want Bibi. Okay, yeah. we understand you don't want Bibi, but that's... If you're fighting for democracy, then you need to go home because that's how democracy works. Yeah. We went to the voting booths, the majority won, and now BB is that's democracy. That's exactly. what. Yeah. Exactly. So, but anyway, this week we are seeing the first signs in the Likud and Netanyahu himself uh, backing down from the, the race to push the Supreme Court reform through the Knesset. Looks like Netanyahu is going to back off and take a step back and come to an agreement with the left-wing parties in the opposition. I am sure the reason for this is for the simple fact that Netanyahu does not want to see the country torn apart. Maybe he is planning on coming back to this uh, from a different angle in a later date. And that's what I was talking about that I was going to get my talk say later in this broadcast. The... Um, yeah, you, Netanyahu and Likud members are slowly, slowly backing down and saying, okay, okay, maybe we shouldn't push this reform through. And I'll tell you what, I agree with every word in the reform, and it needs to be done, and it has to be done. And uh, But 
not at all costs, not at the cost of burning the country down. So maybe Netanyahu, what he's doing, taking a smart move here, saying, okay, we'll back off and we'll come at it differently, you know, talk about it more and, 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 and maybe piece by piece get there without causing all of this, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's, uh, and, you know, my father wrote an article, The Root of Evil in Jerusalem, and it was about the Supreme Court, you know. And it, I won't get into the whole article and everything, but one interesting thing, without going this very in-depth article, if you haven't read it, go read it on the goldenreport.com. Uh, in just the physical building itself, you can do this at home. You can go on Google Maps, go to the Jerusalem, look up the Supreme Court in Jerusalem, zoom in, and it's right close to the Knesset, and it's very clear, not by accident, and not you don't have to squint your eyes to see it. It's a gun with a barrel pointing straight at the Knesset as if it was there to destroy, this, destroy the state of Israel. The Knesset, right, it is the state of Israel. So, I mean, just, just ask your question, why... Did they build it like that? Yeah. You know, that's just a simple question without going into everything else. You know? Yeah. You know, there's a there's a reason. Not, architects don't build anything by chance, by accident. They, you know, they plan everything and the position of the building, the size of the, everything, yeah, yeah. The, the, everything. So you, it was all planned. It was such a clear gun. You could do it. Go to Google Map and check it out. Yeah. Another thing that happened this week is a brutal attack of German tourists that went into Nablus. The German tourists say they just wanted to drink a cup of coffee. And the only mistake that they did was to drive in a car with Israeli license plate. Needless to say, the tourists were brutally attacked by the crowd trying to lynch them. This is another evidence uh, of the reality we live in every day. Yeah where Israelis are being attacked just because they accidentally went into, into the Palestinian areas in the state of Israel. Arab hospitality, you yeah. say? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I heard the uh, German guy being interviewed on Channel 14 here in Israel. Um, it was a very strange interview. I'll tell you what I mean by it. Is, well, first of all, they asked him if he'd been to Israel before, and he said, yeah, he comes a lot. And then they asked him if it was the first time he went into Nablus or Arab uh, cities. He says, no, I always went to Ramallah. Well, Ramallah is not a tourist place. Ramallah is big-time Palestinian. like It's like their capital, right? Um, he, and, uh, and he named another, uh, other Arab country, uh, other Arab cities in the, uh, in the country that Jews aren't allowed in. So that was, for me, that was a red flag. I don't know what he keeps coming back to Israel and going to those places for, but whatever. Anyway, um, but then she asked him if, he, if, this, uh, if it changed his, uh, if it changed his uh, perspective on how the, he sees the Arabs. And he said no, because he always saw them as people who were just full of hate and wanting to kill is, uh, Israelis. He said one of the most embarrassing things is when he drives through, like the street he was attacked on, on the street sign, it says paid by the German uh, uh, government. And he said, you know, their tax dollars pay for this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. it was a, it, so it was a strange interview. I was like, it was pro-Israel, but he's always going to Arab places and, and but anyway. Yeah, you know, there was a pool. They used to deny that they paid uh, Israel and pro-terrorist terror. terror. I'm talking about all the families. Like, you have a village, and in the village, you have few terrorists, but all the others, they just support them and hate Israelis. Uh, now, they openly say that. Some polls, been, uh, um, I, I saw some polls that they yeah. ask questions, and 78, I think, percent of Arabs in Israel, living in Israel, they um, support. support what happened in Hawara last, um, last time. The two brothers have been killed. Yes. They support the terrorist attack. They support attack. the terrorist attack. They say, that, yeah, we should kill them. And, and like 50, more than 56% um, say, we have, you know, just one state, like our state. Israel is ours, no Jews here. And so now they start to be more and more openly saying these things. Yeah, yeah. They used to hide it more. Like, yeah. And still you see the UN and you see American dollars, like we, like we said last time, Biden's administration, um, how he support yeah. 
those people. He's trying to show it like yeah, you, yeah, that what we talked about last week. Yeah, yeah, and it's just so sad. It's yeah. so sad that people don't see the truth. Like if we go to their area, this is what's gonna happen to us. Yeah. They're gonna kill us. Just yeah. because we accidentally. By the way, nobody wants to go there. It's not like we're here, you know. But they're going to our malls. They're going to our our places. Um, yeah, and that's we don't do nothing to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course yeah, not. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very important point to put across because a lot of people, for some reason, still think Israel is the bad guy, right? <laughs> yeah, upper height. Yeah. People say we're upper height. We, we, you know. You got anything else you want to talk we have about? A, we have an Arab judge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, emotional about it. Yeah. Well, get it out. Would you say it all? That's uh, that's what I, that's what I said. It's like um, I'm very emotional. I feel the country is really burning. Yeah. Everything is, you know. And Ramadan came, of course. Now I know all their uh, holidays now lately because of the, because the the, the state of Israel all like feeling uh, uh, afraid and 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 like oh Ramadan's coming, we have to come down the the, the fire, we have to you know yeah. Ben Gurion can't go to prayer in the Temple Mount because they're there and it's Ramadan. Why think about the state of America? And you have a place that's sacred for, let's say, uh, Christians, Jews, and Arabs, okay? One okay. place. And you just say, you know what? Um, Christians not allowed to go there. Yeah. Just the Arabs. We're not allowed. That we decided, no, Christians cannot do go there. Yeah. Is this something you can, like, it's okay? No, of course not. And that's no, what's going no, on with no, the status quo. No one would go for that in America. It's, uh, it's only here in Israel. It happens, and we're expected to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Okay. <laughs> well, I won't add much because you said about everything. So don't forget to join us on thegoldenreport.com. Until next week. Shabbat shalom. God bless you.